In this lesson, we're going to continue exploring aromatic substitution reactions with a special focus on the multi-step synthesis of polysubstituted benzenes with three or more substituents. We're going to begin by looking at arene diazonium ions, which are a new class of substituted aromatic molecules that we haven't really seen before, but which open the door to a lot of nucleophilic aromatic substitution reactions that are highly useful for building in new types of substituents that we've been unable to incorporate just yet with electrophilic aromatic substitution alone. In addition, we're going to look at several types of functional group interchange reactions. These are new reactions that allow us to exchange the nature of a functional group connected to a benzene ring. And this can do useful things like change an ortho para director into a meta director, for example, or vice versa. And so this is, enlarges our synthetic toolbox and it enlarges the scope of substituted benzenes that we can synthesize. In addition, we'll look at electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions in disubstituted benzenes and how multiple substituents can either compete with each other or reinforce one another in reactions involving electrophilic substitution. And we'll look at electrophilic aromatic substitution of heteroaromatics. Arene diazonium ions contain the N2 plus functional group connected to an aromatic ring. And the N2 plus functional group is known as the diazonium group. This class of substituted aromatics is interesting because the N2 plus group is a good leaving group or nucleophuge. It has the potential to depart, forming nitrogen gas, which then bubbles out of solution irreversibly. And so this substrate is amenable to nucleophilic aromatic substitution reactions. And it's very easy to synthesize from amino benzenes or anilines through a relatively straightforward process that we'll see in the remainder of this video. And so arene diazonium ions open a lot of doors for new types of synthetic products and new types of reactivity. The pi bond between the two nitrogens and the positive charge on the nitrogen linked to the aromatic ring emphasize the point that the N2 plus or diazonium group is a powerful electron withdrawing group. And so arene diazonium ions are generally heavily deactivated toward electrophilic aromatic substitution. However, these molecules are amenable to nucleophilic aromatic substitution because of the possibility of N2 plus acting as a leaving group or nucleophuge. As we'll see shortly, these intermediates are typically prepared in aqueous solutions of what's called nitrous acid. And at room temperature, water substitutes for the N2 plus group spontaneously, converting the aryl diazonium into a neutral phenol over time. This is slow at zero degrees C, and so typically the preparation of arene diazoniums is conducted in an ice bath to avoid this conversion spontaneously to phenols. Although this reaction is worth keeping in mind as sometimes we want a phenol product from a diazonium starting material. Reactions of arene diazoniums with a variety of nucleophiles lead to nucleophilic aromatic substitution, displacement of the N2 plus group by the nucleophile. And here the nucleophile could be anything from OH to OR, cyano, a halogen, and a number of other groups that are difficult to install through electrophilic aromatic substitution means. Let's see now how aromatic amines, or anilines, react with nitrous acid to form diazonium salts. And the first thing we should really work out is what exactly we mean by nitrous acid, which is written as HNO2 or HONO, with the latter being a little more descriptive of the structure. Nitrous acid is typically generated in situ from NaNO2 and sulfuric acid. And this just means that we mix these two reagents and never actually isolate the nitrous acid that forms. A Lewis structure of nitrous acid shows us that this molecule is similar to nitric acid, but is missing the additional oxygen. Protonation of this intermediate biphosphoric acid generates a small amount of the NO plus cation, a strong electrophile. Just as the NO2 plus cation is isoelectronic with CO2, the NO plus cation is isoelectronic with carbon monoxide, but is a much stronger electrophile because of the positive charge of the molecule. When either a primary or secondary amine is treated with nitrous acid, we get products resulting from the interaction of the nucleophilic nitrogen atom with the electrophilic NO plus cation. In the case of a secondary amine, we end up with a product that contains a new nitrogen-nitrogen single bond and retains the NO double bond in the NO plus cation. This functional group containing two nitrogens singly bound to each other with one of them bearing a double bond to oxygen is known as the nitroso group. And although we won't have much else to say about nitroso compounds, I wanted to show this example as it gives us mechanistic insight into what happens in the primary amine case below. 
In the case of the primary amine, the nitrogen atom has two hydrogens rather than one, as in the case above, and the ultimate product in this case is a diazonium ion. The counter ion here typically depends on how the nitrous acid was generated. If we used NaNO2 and H2SO4, it's either NO2 minus or HSO4 minus. And if we return to the nitroso example above, we can get a hint as to how this reaction proceeds. First, it seems likely that the primary amine forms a nitroso intermediate. This establishes one of the three nitrogen-nitrogen bonds in the diazonium product. Proton transfer then establishes the second nitrogen-nitrogen bond in the product. If we think about transferring a proton to the terminal oxygen and drawing a resonance structure like this. Finally, the elimination of water through a few more elementary steps establishes the diazonium ion product with the nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond and positive charge on nitrogen. What can we do exactly with aryl diazonium ions? Well, the key, as I've mentioned, is to think of the N2 plus group as a good leaving group or nucleophage. And so this can participate in nucleophilic aromatic substitution reactions where a nucleophile substitutes for the N2 plus group. Here we're just going to briefly survey the conditions required to do these transformations, and in a later lesson we're going to look at some of these reactions in more detail. To establish the cyano group, we can use a copper 1 salt, copper 1 cyanide, and in fact we can apply the same strategy to install a chlorine using CuCl or a bromine using CuBr. These three reactions are known as Sandmeyer reactions, and we'll look at them in more detail in a later video. To substitute the N2 plus group with OH, all we need to do is dissolve the diazonium ion in water and warm it up so that substitution can occur. It's even possible to convert the diazonium group into a hydrogen if we want to mask the directing effect of this group in a final target. To do this, we make use of the strong reducing agent H3PO2. The reagent HBF4, which we can really think of as H plus BF4 minus, supplies nucleophilic fluoride that can displace the diazonium group, forming an aryl fluoride. And finally, to synthesize the iodide, all we have to do is treat with an iodide salt, something like potassium iodide or Ki. Adding aryl diazoniums to our synthetic toolbox opens the door to the synthesis of new substituted benzenes. And since we can synthesize the diazoniums from anilines, it's also pretty straightforward to convert, for example, a substituted aniline into a relatively complex product by converting to a diazonium and then doing a nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction. One last point of interest with aryl diazoniums is that we can draw an alternative resonance structure of the aryl diazonium in which the terminal nitrogen has positive charge. This is interesting because it shows us that this terminal nitrogen can act as an electrophile. In fact, this is a pretty painful resonance form as this nitrogen is violating the octet rule. And so it makes sense that that nitrogen would be a good electrophile. In fact, it's possible to use aryl diazoniums as active electrophiles in EAS, not as the aromatic, but as the active electrophile E+, provided the aromatic we use is electron-rich. The resulting products are called azo compounds, and let me show you exactly what I mean by this. When we combine an aryl diazonium like this with an electron-rich aromatic, something that contains an electron donating group. Electrophilic aromatic substitution can occur involving donation from the electron-rich aromatic to the diazonium at nitrogen. Electron flow like this produces a sigma complex that's analogous to those that we've seen previously in electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. The carbon that bound to the nitrogen is now sp3 hybridized, and the molecule has a positive charge overall. At this point, loss of a proton from this intermediate, facilitated by some base, for example, the solvent or the counter ion that comes with the diazonium cation, produces the substituted aromatic, which has a rather unique structure. We have the fiddle ring in the original diazonium ion connected to nitrogen, two nitrogens linked by a double bond, and the other nitrogen connected to the electron-rich aromatic ring. This is what's known as an azo compound, and these azo compounds are often called azo dyes because they're highly colored. Essentially, every atom that we've drawn out here is part of a contiguous pi system stretching from one aromatic ring across the two nitrogens all the way to the other, and including the oxygen atom, including the electron donating group. This long conjugated pi system gives rise to the color of azo dyes.